I have 10 tips to make aviaries a more unique, more beautiful, and more exciting addition to your parks in Jurassic World Evolution 2, so stay tuned to be inspired. This video is sponsored by FlexiSpot. More on them in a minute. When Jurassic World Evolution 2 had just come out, I did a video with five creative tips for the lagoons, and I always intended to do the same for the aviaries. Well, almost exactly a year later, here we are. But this time around, I have 10 tips that you can mix and match and incorporate into your next park build. This tips list is entirely unmodded, so you can use these on PC and console. And having access to mods is not the same as having access to ideas and inspiration, so even if you are using mods, I think these tips will still make your parks even better. But first, a message from our sponsor. Gamers, are you also sitting at your desk all day? For me, my work and my hobbies all require a desk, but sitting for too long is linked to many chronic health issues like back pain and high blood pressure. If I want high blood pressure, I'll play challenge mode for that. Thank you very much. That's why I'm super excited about today's sponsorship. FlexiSpot has a range of ergonomic furniture like the E7 standing desk, and you might think that's for old people, but no, it's for gamers so we don't fossilize in our desk chairs and feel old. You set the E7 desk to your perfect height for both sitting sitting down and standing up and you easily save both settings so you can switch from one to another with the press of a button. The E7 desk can carry a weight of up to 125 kilograms so even the most beefy gaming PC or a Lego Titanic is a lightweight for this table. You can optimize the desk to your needs by adding accessories like extra cable management, monitor stands, desk chairs and even wheels. But I can't be trusted with stuff on wheels. I went with a black frame with a bamboo tabletop but you can choose from three different frame colors and up to 12 different desktops. I'm showing you the Dutch website right now especially for my fellow Dutchies but both the Dutch and the USA website are linked in the description box below. For Black Friday, FlexiSpot has several promotions, including free delivery. I really recommend you check out the links in the description box to see all of these deals. Elevate your gaming slash hobby slash work from home setup with a standing desk from FlexiSpot. The first tip I have is a layout for the aviary and the viewing attractions that I am a big fan of. This shape of the aviary leaves a little nook between the two wings of the aviary and it's the perfect space to place two viewing galleries. For wow effect, I like adding a monorail arch to the entry section, which really creates this feel like it's its own separate area and attraction. Of course you can do this with any building style of aviary and you can decorate it however you like. In my opinion, the end result is really pretty and theme park-esque and I think it makes it look more special and more well thought out than just having a regularly shaped aviary with viewing galleries along the edge. For extra dramatic effect you can extend the wings even further and have a tour come through as well that the path crosses over. The Jurassic Park aviary has the lowest concrete barrier of the three variants that we have in the game, but even that barrier is still too high for pedestrians to really be able to look inside the aviary. Of course, paths don't actually give dinosaur visibility, but I think this idea is a fun alternative to another viewing gallery or another tour. Because as you might imagine, in a big park you're gonna have so many of those that you're gonna want to mix it up. I've placed a single Jurassic Park aviary and raised the terrain around it, burying the concrete base entirely. This means the metal grate comes down right to the ground, so guess good? theoretically, again, look into the aviary from the path. And let's just use our imagination and pretend that they can. You all know that I love using monorail tracks decoratively, so I put a ring of monorail around the aviary to give the whole structure a more luxurious appeal. And then I've added path and decorations around it as well. Of course, it is important to note that your very first step after placing the aviary should be to attach a hatchery and actually put creatures into the aviary. I only skipped that very important step because I just made this for the purpose of showing it to you in this video. This is currently not part of a park. Obviously a really cool and different way to use the aviaries is to use them for dinosaurs instead of flying reptiles or better still a combination of the two. I've showcased this trick before, so I apologize for repeating old news if you are familiar with this trick already, but this video is the perfect opportunity to share it with more people who missed my previous coverage of it. To get dinosaurs into the aviary, go into the aviary hatchery and filter on new. As you will see, this will empty the entire roster from the hatchery. Then go into a regular hatchery and select the dinosaur species you want. 
You don't have to start incubation, just select the species so the tile lights up. Then you go back into the aviary hatchery and you'll see that the dinosaur you selected is now ready to go inside that aviary hatchery. So that's where you press incubate dinosaur. You go through the standard incubation steps and through a wonderful glitch, you can then release the dinosaur directly into the aviary. I've built an entire park with dinosaurs inside aviaries like climate controlled biodomes, and it was a super cool build. So I couldn't leave it off this list. If you're subscribed to the channel and have notifications on, you'll never miss handy tricks like this one and the other nine in this video. So you know what to do. There's a surprising number of decorations that are suitable for use inside the aviary. It's weird that some are randomly not allowed inside the aviary, but many are, and you can make some cool scenes with them. Like the opening scene from Jurassic Park with the raptor paddock. And I know that tower wasn't part of the scene, but it's really awesome to place inside the aviary. Obviously, if you have mods, you can put an actual Biosyn viewing tower in the aviary, but you can more or less create the same effects with this decorative tower if you're playing unmodded. And perhaps run a tour track right by it so you can pretend the tower is accessible that way. Something I've done before in my Dominion City is create a greenhouse with the planters, and you could add smaller species of flying reptile or maybe just copies and pretend that they are pest control. Another fun thing to put inside the aviary is a little campground using rocks to create the outline of a fire pit and then surrounding it with the decorative white tents. I love making these little campgrounds all over the place, honestly, I think it's super cute, but I never expected that these decorations were compatible within the aviary, but when I tried it out, I found out that they are. Overall, my tip would be to see for yourself which decorations are placeable inside the aviary, and I'm sure that seeing the options will inspire you. You can even put fountains in the aviary. Combining an aviary with a lagoon creates a really big and interesting focal point in your park. And one of my new favorites is creating an island surrounded by lagoons and then placing a large aviary inside it. It fits like a glove, which is probably why I find it so aesthetically pleasing. This trick works best when you don't turn the lagoons or the aviaries before placing them. Just place them in the orientation they are in when you select them from the menu. That makes it much easier to line them up. However, on the topic of struggling to line up an aviary with a lagoon or with something else, I have a tip specifically for that later on in this video. What I did for this example specifically was sink the area down before placing the aviaries so that from the other side of the lagoon, you just see the glass bubble above the water. And I also left an opening between the lagoons so I could get a tour into the aviary for much needed visibility. But another thing you can do for visibility is line it all with monorail track. This gives the train a cool view into the aviary and the lagoon, and it also creates more visual interest around the entry point for the tours. Of course, you can use the lagoon plus aviary plus monorail combo in many different ways. I also think it looks neat to just have a monorail travel between the two. I would totally want to ride that monorail. But an even more exciting variation on that would be to substitute the monorail with the new zipline attraction. You all know I'm a big fan of this new attraction. I'm even building a park right now during the Saturday live streams that only uses the ziplines as attraction. If you are interested in that build, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you'll be there live to give suggestions for the build and dinosaur names. My favorite unmodded way of combining the aviary with the zipline is by having two long aviaries side by side as close together as they can go and string a zipline between them. The ziplines give pretty good visibility into the aviary, especially if you go for larger species, and it's a safe way to make your guests fly with the flying reptiles. The space between the aviaries you can decorate with rocks and trees, and I added a river that connects the two aviaries together. I think this would look absolutely awesome in a park build. I feel like tip number eight is something a lot of people already do or have done, but it's such a nice effect that, speaking for myself at least, I need to do it more often because I've been neglecting it. I think I've only done it twice which is sinful. And that is to create an isolated area surrounded by aviaries that is only accessible via tour that goes through the aviaries. I like to keep these areas small so that the surrounding aviary doesn't have to get too gigantic. Obviously, you can use this area in two ways. You can make it into a secluded guest section with a hop on hop off point for your tour, or you can have it function as a regular dinosaur exhibit completely enclosed by the aviary. But speaking of gigantic aviaries, 
If you are going to make a super large aviary for your Quetzalcoatlus or maybe for your regular land species like the T-Rex or a herd of Brachiosaurus, I recommend deleting one dome. In my opinion, a vast, expansive aviary looks a little... structurally unsound. By deleting one dome, you create a hexagonal structure within that can function as much needed extra support for the roof. And I think it's visually more interesting as well. You can line the walls with lights or other decorations and or put a biosyn viewing tower in that little cutout section to give a new perspective of your aviary. The final tip is very practical. It's one of those TikTok-esque, what's one trick you thought everybody knew that makes life easier. And it's my tip for when you're fiddling with placing an aviary. Aligning aviaries with a lagoon or with the border of the map can be difficult sometimes because you don't quite know, you know, f four or five aviary domes in where you're gonna end up if you're gonna make it turns and weird shapes. So if you're building an aviary and you realize that your placement of the first one was just a little off and now you don't have enough space for the final dome to create that shape you wanted, hit pause and then delete the aviaries. You'll see circular dust lines where the aviaries were, and you can use those as guidelines for moving that first aviary over just enough so you can make it fit the way you want it, all the way down to where you ran into a snag earlier. This trick, of course, also works for the lagoons. If you enjoyed these tips, please give the video a like, and of course, subscribe for more. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy the game.